Is marijuana addictive? Sort of, but not really. Now, full disclosure, I'm not a professional psychologist or psychiatrist or neurologist or botanist. Basically, I'm not a professional anything. I don't even have a bachelor's degree. I'm just another rube on YouTube. And I wonder to what extent that's because I've been smoking marijuana for over 30 years and counting. Does that mean I've been addicted to marijuana all along? Sort of, but not really. And I'm not trying to even be funny or cute with that. This is a sincere public service announcement, especially for anyone just beginning to smoke marijuana. And by the way, if you're a teenager, and I'm talking even 19 and of legal age, be extremely careful with smoking marijuana. I would stay away from it altogether because science is discovering that our brains don't fully mature until about 25 years of age, male or female. And smoking way too much marijuana as a teenager can literally arrest your mental and emotional development. It can actually lower your intelligence. And with that said, full disclosure again, I strongly believe in the full legalization of marijuana, recreational use and all. And I'm also for the decriminalization of all drugs, even crystal meth and heroin, though I'm not suggesting those should be as easily available to buy the way we should be able to buy marijuana or even mushrooms and, of course, guns. Yes, I am a pro-Second Amendment person, too. But since I'm no policy expert either, I don't want to get too sidetracked. But even though I'm not a policy expert, I'm still a tax-paying U.S. citizen who can vote, and I have every right to sound off on policies that will ultimately affect my life. Which is why I strongly believe in the full legalization of marijuana. And like I said, if someone is caught with personal possession of heroin or crystal meth, they shouldn't be sent to jail, let alone prison. They should be dealt with as people who need help. Because if you're already pushing needles into your arms, you clearly need help, not solitary confinement. But coming back to marijuana, if you don't want to graduate from smoking marijuana to pushing heroin through a needle into your arm, here's some hard-earned life advice I'd like to share. Especially if you're a goal-oriented individual like I used to be, and you know what you want out of life like I used to, but you're still young, maybe you're in college, or you just graduated, be very careful with toying around with marijuana. I'm not saying you should never do it. It's okay, give it a try. But if you do, and you find that you actually like it, and you like it a lot, watch out. After all, not everyone who tries marijuana ends up liking it. And I have found it interesting that people who seem to love smoking marijuana, they usually don't care for alcohol. And vice versa, people who are into heavy drinking, they don't seem to care for marijuana. Me personally, I still love smoking marijuana, and I like drinking too, but nowhere near how much I love weed. But now that I'm in my late 40s, I've discovered there's a time and place for the wacky weed. And I've found that the ideal time to smoke marijuana is every other weekend preferably on a Friday or Saturday night only. But that's the thing about weed and about buying more weed than you can smoke on a Friday or Saturday night. Before you know it, you're smoking it on a Monday morning before going to work. And if you find yourself doing that, that's when you can safely assume it's becoming a problem. And that's the thing about marijuana. It provides you with such a relaxing, pleasant high and even moments of enlightenment and epiphanies that it deceives you into thinking nothing's wrong. And I don't want to personify marijuana either. It's a plant. It's not a person. It's most certainly not a demon. And there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that it has a consciousness where it's managed to create a surreptitious agenda to make itself legal and ultimately rule over the world like a totalitarian dictator. However, like I said before, if you're a goal-driven individual and you have plans in life, those plans can very easily start to fade and evaporate into a haze of I'll get to it tomorrow, or worse yet, a series of second-guessing your goals and drifting off into other goals and forgetting about the first goal you had in life. And before you know it, weeks, months, years, decades go by and you find that you never completed your bachelor's degree and that you're working a job you're not entirely passionate about, but you'll get to finding another job soon. But first you want to spark one up when you get home from work because you need to chillax. So you put on some Pink Floyd and then one day you find 10 years have got behind you. No one told you where to run. You missed the starting gun. I remember listening to that song in college and thinking, nah, that'll never happen to me. 
And here I am making a fucking YouTube video precisely because of that. <laughs> and if you're watching this video and you're thinking, nah, that might have happened to you, old man, but that'll never happen to me. Just remember this. It's not for nothing why Pink Floyd wrote those lyrics on practically the year I was born. I'm not saying that that song is specifically about marijuana and much less that it was written with me in mind. But we're human. And not only are we pattern-seeking mammals, we're pattern-repeating mammals too. Most of our behaviors are so predictable that all you need to do is read up on some ancient texts and you'll soon discover we're making so many of the same mistakes over and over that it's no wonder why people think the Bible is prophetic. The Bible is not prophetic. They're just records of what people did and what they will most likely continue to do because we're more emotional than we are rational. But I definitely don't want to get sidetracked with biblical prophecies or even some of my favorite Pink Floyd songs. Like I said, this video is a public service announcement for anyone who likes to smoke the wacky weed and either thinks they might be getting addicted to marijuana or they refuse to believe just how much time, energy, and even money will go up in smoke before you realize you're in your late 40s and you're wondering what the hell happened to my life's goals. And this is why I say marijuana is sort of addictive, but not really. It's not like cocaine, heroin, and much less crystal meth where your body and even your brain will almost physically change and the chemical addiction becomes so great that many of your body's cells will become dependent, especially because of the depletion of dopamine, that they will change your behavior. Again, I'm no neurologist or psychiatrist and there's more than enough other YouTube videos out there that provide you with all the evidence about the irrefutable dangers of drugs like crystal meth and heroin. And yet with marijuana, sure, smoke them if you got them. Just be very careful if you find yourself doing that every single day, especially when you're postponing whatever it was you were going to do that day until tomorrow. Because that tomorrow will lapse into a decade or two. And before you know it, you'll completely forget what it was you were going to do before you lit up that joint. I hope this helps all you fellow potheads out there, especially those living out in Colorado, and if you're in your early 20s and you're beginning to enjoy the fruits of the marijuana legalization movement that will hopefully keep people out of prison and perhaps help a few others become millionaires and even billionaires, but may cause a lot of people to walk into a haze of smoke where they never quite make it out the other side. Thanks for watching.